Hi everyone and welcome back to our quiz game series. In this episode we're going to start working out what points the players have earned based upon how quick they answered the question. So we've already got a timer so let's make use of it and get out what we want. Let's jump in. So as I mentioned we've already done the timer for our question screen. It was this bar we've done in the last episode. So we already know the time that's happening here. All we need to capture is when the player has clicked. So we're going to go to the graph here and we're going to look for the on answer selected. Now, currently, this is getting out current locked in answer, changing it so we can't click on any others, and setting the answer in the player controller. Now, I've got a question timer. I'm going to store that as my player controller's answer. Time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little value uh, float to the set answer here to indicate what time they got set. So I'm going to go to set answer, open it up. And in here we can see the answer is getting set and sent across over to our locked in answer for the game state. So we want to be doing that too. So what I'm going to do is on set answer here is add an input to know what time is remaining. And I'm going to go to my MC update locked in answer and add that to here as well. There we go. And what we're going to do in here is alongside the locked in answer, we're also going to have another map, which is going to be the, the point value that they've got. So we're going to do, um, player time and that would be a map of the player state which is this here player state player state mapped to a float so on here we can drag out our get player times add to the map the player state and the time they had remaining. So we're keeping track of what they answered and how quick they answered it. From there. So now let's go back ourselves up. So we went from the player controller into there. We're going to plug in our time remaining. And then we had the question screen accessing the player controller. So let's go back to the question screen. And now we've got to fill in our time remaining, which we have from our timer handle. I'm going to drag this out in the verbal section, get it, and then from here we can get the time remaining. And I'm just going to plug that into there. So now I know, and the game state knows, who answered what and when. So let's go now back over to the game state for the quiz. Alongside the setting of our map, we also need to add it to the clearing of our map. So when we clear locked in answers, we're going to clear the player times as well. So let's do that. Clear. And the other thing we need to keep track of in our game state is also the actual player scores. So we're going to add another variable and call it player scores. And this is going to be the same. So it's going to be a player state with a float. Once the answer is all locked in, we then want to, when we reveal the answers, give the points to players. So what's going to happen is when the answer is revealed, we want the game state to work out who got the right answer and award them the points appropriately. So on our game state here, we're going to create a custom event. And this is going to be a server call. And it's going to be award points. Now, to be able to do this, it needs to know what the correct answer was. So we're going to put in input here, correct answer. And now I want to do a for each loop for each of the players in the game. So we're going to get the player array. And this is, a, again, a list of all the player states. We can do a for each loop for this. And for each one, 
we are going to cast this to our particular one, so PS quiz. And the reason why we're taking it like this is because we want to eventually tell the player that, hey, not only did you like score points, but we actually need to tell them that we they scored points so they can show it on the screen um, with whatever UI things you want it to have. But what we need to do in here is we're going to check if the locked in answer I'm going to find the pinfall PS quiz there. And if this matches the correct answer, that means I want to give them the points. So let's just promote that to a little variable for now. There we are. And then I'm going to take my correct answer, pair the two together. With equals, equal exactly. And we'll put that in there. Okay. So if it's true, we're given points. So that's when I work, work out the player times. So we get in the player times. And then from there, I want to find the player state that we're looking for here, which is this one. And this time will be something between like zero and 10. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply that by 10. And then add on 100. So you get 100 for the correct answer. And then you get a bonus based upon how quick you answered it. Like that. Now this being a float, it has the chance of giving us decimal values. So we do want to truncate this and basically get rid of the uh, the decimal point afterwards. So we're going to take this value here and just round it to the nearest integer. Okay, and now I can store that in the player scores. So the player scores we've got down here. And I actually will change that from a float to an integer. Might as well. And on the player scores here, we want to add the points that they've got. However, we want to add it onto the existing points they have. Because we don't want to replace them. We want to add onto them. So from the player scores, we need to find and add on the result. And the find is going to be the player PS quiz here. Crack that there. And we will tidy it up in a second, so don't fret. I'll get into true there. Okay. So this is a bit messy. Let's clean this up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Uh, let's actually take all of this here. It's part of server award points event. And collapse this to a function. Collapse to function. I'm going to call award points. And that's all to to be replicated. So it replicates on server. And award points here works like this. So I can actually convert the correct answer here to a local variable instead. We don't need it all the time. We just need it for this function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. Yep. And we're going to promote the correct answer here to a local variable. Like that. And replace that over here. Like so. And we're also doing this, after this cast, we're doing a lot of lines coming out of the PS quiz. And we don't want that. We only want one line coming out of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag out and promote that to a local variable as well. Call it player state. like that and i now want to use it for everywhere else here so it replaces all those lines with our own local variable there we go
Okay, so that is our loop done. Uh, we do need to tell all the player states that they've just scored. So what I'm going to do is go to my PS quiz. Let's find that. Uh, PS quiz. And in the player state quiz here, I'm going to create an event dispatcher on points awarded. And this needs to know how many points we are being awarded here. So let's add an integer here. Points. Like so. So if I go back to that game state, on when I calculate the final points here, I'm going to take the player state reference and I'm going to call the points awarded. The points I'm going to add is the ones, uh, not from this way, from the round here. There we go. Because this is the new points we're adding. So we're saying like, hey, you've got these points. But this is a total. And apologies, one thing I need to do is, so is change this. So at the moment, we're doing this multicast for locking in the answers. We want to do the same here because we don't want to be just server doing this. We want everyone to do this on their own game states. Um, reason being is because uh, maps can't be replicated, but we want everyone to be able to know what everyone's score is. So on the ward points here, I'm going to change that to a multicast. Change to run multicast. And then back on the player controller, you'll see that this will be fine because the set answer is happening on the server anyway. So this will happen on a server, call the game state, and then multicast it to everyone. So to see this working, we are going to go to the uh, PS quiz here. And on the class defaults, we're going to go on points awarded, which is the event dispatch we made here. We can just click on that, add the event for it. And we can put this on begin play. Okay. And all we do here, I'm going to do a print string to the points. So the last thing we need to do is we need to tell our game state when to do the award points. And that's going to happen on our question screen when we reveal the answers. So let's find where we're doing the reveal. So when we go to reveal our answers at the end of completed, this is when we want to do the thing to give us the points. So in here, we're going to do a server and you'll see the node called is server. And it has to do this because we're using multicast functions and therefore the server is the one that's got access to that as well as the game mode as well. We need the server be able to do this so the server and then i need to get the game state pass to our game state on true and in here we need to award the points multicast award points and we just need to feed it the correct answer and the correct answer is actually being stored on our game mode so in our game mode at start before we shuffle it we're storing down what is actually the correct answer so that's what we want to grab here let's go back to that screen there get game mode and because we're on the server we can access it we're going to cast to our gm quiz and because we always can have this game mode i can pretty safely say it's always going to cast so i'm going to do a pure cast there and from here i can get the correct answer Okay. Let's go ahead and test this out and see if that works. And which ancient civilization built the pyramids of Giza? That's the Egyptians. And at the end of the time, we should see a print string. We don't. So let's see how we could debug this. Oh. So, so the main thing I want to do is check, make sure the answers are actually correct so when i'm doing the award points for correct answer i want to check to see if these are coming through correctly so i'm going to add a break point to my branch here and see if they are getting the correct answer and it's matching up with what the correct answer actually is so let's go ahead and put the egyptians 
Okay. Here, do the breakpoint, and we're going to check each one here. So that's got the answer D, and this is uh, that one's got the actual wording of the answer. So I just need to change it so they will match. Okay, so technically they're correct, but they obviously don't match up. So what I'm thinking I'm doing is I'm going to change the locked in answers to come through with the actual answer. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to the event graph and look at where I'm setting the locked in answer. It's going from update locked in answer. That will be handling from the player controller, I think. Yep, set answer, which then comes from the question screen. And we'll go on answer selected here. It's going long. Get a locked in answer and get an index from it. Okay, so that's where it's coming from, this index. So I need to change this. So the answer is these widgets. So let's take a look at that. And the variable they've got in here, with the index, great. But what I probably want to do is do set the answer option here. Okay, so I'm going to put this choice text here as a variable. Like that. Instead. I then want to go back to the question screen and rather than getting the index, we want to get the choice text. Instead. So if I compile that and take off that break point that I put in earlier, which I've done in, oh, I have taken it off, good. Um, we're going to push play and let's see if this works now. Again, we should see a print string of the values we get right. Egyptian, Egyptians. Nope, okay. <laughs> let's see what else we've got. Okay, so still not working. So let's figure out what else is going wrong. And I think the issue is to deal with our event dispatcher here. Now, event dispatcher in this case is being called by the server. However, event dispatchers can't be replicated. So what I need to do instead is on the player state is not worry about having an event dispatcher. So I can just get rid of that bit and I'll delete the event dispatcher. Go back to my game state and you see it's given us an error. We'll delete that. And on a player state here, I'm going to keep and call this on points awarded event. So, on points awarded. And put like in the points there. And because of the server that's doing this, I want to tell this event here to be replicated to the owning client. So they know who, what points they got. Okay. So, let's do our test. the Egyptians there we go yeah points so we eventually got there and we got our points coming in from the timer being received and replicating across so the next part is to be able to show the total scores on the screen to all the players in some kind of UI so we're going to do that in the next part, which you can find over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. A massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.